Hello, hi, and welcome. It's time for another unboxing video. All right, so we have Tamed Wild today. It's the December box. I know it's still December, okay? Um, but here it is. Comes in a plain envelope. Well, poly mailer, I guess is what they're called. Uh, let's dig into it while I open this package. Hi, and welcome if you're new here. My name is Melissa. And I'm here to hopefully spark something that helps you on your journey. And that comes through witchy unboxing videos, random ass tarot readings, new moon and full moon tarot readings, uh, metaphysical Mondays, whatever I feel like needs to be shared. All right, so let's get in here is our normal Tamed Wild box. So pretty. If you're um, not familiar with Tamed Wild, they always come in these cute little boxes and they're like... I'm old. They're good boxes. <laughs> My favorite box was from Blue Apron. Blue Apron is a like food one, food subscription box thing. Come on. There we go. All right. Anyways, now that we have the box up and I can stop yammering. Yammering? I don't know if that's the right word. I don't remember the theme. Uh, the December ritual. Here's our ritual card and our items, which I don't want to see yet because I don't remember what they are. But this is our December ritual if you feel like pausing and screenshotting with my janky nails. And here is the back. Tiny writing, so if you screenshot that, you might have to zoom in, I'm guessing. Okay. I'm not going to look at those cards yet. Up first. Come on. Okay, here we go. There's usually jewelry or crystals in these bags, um, sometimes both if it's crystal jewelry. Uh, like this is, ooh, that's cute. Okay, hold on. So we have like a natural cord. It's just a cord, no clasp or anything like that. I'm wondering if this has to do with our ritual, um, but it looks like, like a leathery, it's like a leather cord. I don't know if it's real leather. We'll get into that for those of you who prefer not to use animal products. Let me get this open though, because this is really pretty. It's like a pendulum. It looks like frosted glass. Oh, it's selenite. It kind of looks like a, like a seashell. See how it's like reflecting that light though? This is selenite. It looks like it has a crack through it, but it's like... It almost looks two-sided, um, but it's not like a crack crack, but I am worried about it. <laughs> Let's just say that um, because it, it does go along where the um, hook thingy, whatever that's called, the eye, the eyelet, whatever it's called, um, is screwed in. So it might actually be a crack. So I will be very careful with that. Selenite is one of the softer stones, so it's kind of easy to break. Um, and it does split because it's like a vertical. Do I have a piece in here? I have a skull. <laughs> I don't have like a raw piece of selenite in here. Satin spar, whatever you want to call it. I have a whole video on that from like two years ago that explains the difference. Anyways, um, it is one of the softer stones and it's like a layered kind of situation. So it will break across those layers like so easily. And then we have a jar of mini pine cones so we can get it without the glare there's little tiny little pine cones in there cute all right candles to okay do remember something from the email saying you'll either get gold or silver i got silver two silver chime candles which is fine because I have lots of gold candles already. I don't think I have very many silver candles. And then we have the Wheel of the Year book, An Introduction to the Sabbaths. This is not something that I like subscribe to. Um, I don't follow the the like calendar, the witch's wheel, whatever. Um, the calendar of Sabbaths. Um, it's too Wiccan to me. Nothing against Wiccans. It's too rigid for me. It's too ruly for me. Um, 
but I do, I am interested. I just don't celebrate them, if that makes any sense. I do more of solstice and moon phases. Um, so, um, and I, there is one where I completely mispronounced one and was corrected in the comments. I asked for it. I said, tell me how I'm saying, how to say this right. So anyways, and next we have a wheel of the year. Yes, that's what it's called. Wheel of the year, um, altar cloth and it's like velvety suede ish, I guess. And metallic. Very cute. It's, I don't know, 12 to 14 inches wide and square and hemmed. Okay. Very pretty color. I like the purple. And it has like, what is, we have, wow, we have a lot of symbols in there. We have the um, triple goddess moon. We have the uh, moon phases, the triskelias, all of that. I think I might have said that wrong too. Um, uh, but it has like the dates too. So, you know, if I was to start, that would be helpful. This might go in the giveaway box. So things that I have duplicates of or more than enough of, or I know for sure I won't use, will go into a giveaway box and I'll do a giveaway when it's like full. Um, and it's underneath my chair, so I can't show you what's in it right now. <laughs> but that is everything in our box. So let's read the cards. Make sure nothing's missing. December magical items, selenite pendant. Selenite is a high vibrational, supportive and protective stone because of this selenite is best placed in the center of a home used to move stagnant energies or in crystal gridding. Considered a guardian in crystal magic, selenite is revered by, by healers as the ideal crystal for casting a safety net around loved ones. Wear this selenite pendant to protect, soothe, move, negative energy and support. I like selenite for cleansing personally, um, but I do have a selenite necklace, but I wear it more with the intention to, it's one that I wrapped myself, it's a raw piece and it's kind of getting rounder on the edges, um, but I wrapped it pretty well and I've been wearing it for years. I haven't worn it in a while, but I usually wear it with the intention to keep my energy field clear, which can be protective because it prevents anything from coming in and that sort of thing. Um, but that's the intention that I specifically use with selenite when I'm wearing it. Okay. Well, wheel of the year altar cloth, um, contains eight festivals and sat the, the contains eight festivals, the Sabbath. Um, these sacred days include Samhain, Yule, Imbolc, Ostara, Beltane, Litha, Lunasa, and Mabon. Again, Feel free to correct my pronunciations. Um, these beautifully designed altar cloths work wonderfully on your altar or your sacred space. Keep this cloth in your home to remember and honor the wheel of the year, which always turning and spiraling. You can also hang it. It's beautiful. Um, and then the wheel of the year booklet, uh, honoring the cycles of all things. Learn about the different equinox, solstice, cross quarter day celebrations with inspiration for traditional celebrations. Um, modern interpretations and ways to work with the wheel of the year. See, I'm more on the modern side of kind of that sort of thing. Um, but it's definitely something I will read the book, but I will probably also put it in the giveaway box. So, um, if you're bothered by somebody reading a book before you read it, no, nah, that, that can't, that's crazy. Nobody would be offended by that or bothered by that. You wouldn't even know. Um, I won't write in it. I promise. Gold or silver chime candles, a set of two. Um, gold chime candles are worked with in candle magic to symbolize the sun, commonly burned to achieve creativity and inspiration. They are recommended for use in rituals with the intent to gain success, good fortune, and protection. However, candle magic is potent when you create your own associations and magic. So meditate on what gold symbolizes for you in your practice. And that is, I'm glad they said that because as soon as I was reading what they use, what the... The, the typical use for gold chime candles is, I thought of a host of different things that I use it for. Um, so the create your own associations to the colors, very important. That's like a most important, in my opinion, thing of doing any type of practice like this is, um, you know, using your own internal guidance to 
have correlations between things like colors, etc. Um, crystals as well, um, your experience with them can help you um, determine what it's best used for, what its preferred intentions are with you, because everyone has their own energy. So anyways, um, gold, I, um, I have used gold in money magic, obviously. Um, and um, I attempted to connect with Anubis because I felt like that was a reaching out. I don't do deity work. Um, but in that conversation with that candle, I did a um, divination associated with it. And it wasn't necessarily a, I want to work with you. I'm just here. You know, I'm just watching basically. Don't mind me just watching. Anyways, um, silver. Silver chime candles are worked within candle magic to symbolize the moon. Makes sense. Commonly burned to connect with your intuition and psychic ability, they are recommended for use in ritual with the intent to purify, heal, and connect with the goddess. However, candle magic is potent when you create your own associations in magic, so meditate on what silver symbolizes for you in your practice. I have never used silver chime candles for anything, but the association with the moon is what feels best and most resonant for me. Um, so, and I do a lot of moon stuff, so that makes sense, and I will definitely get some use out of those. Um, altar jar of tiny pine cones. Let's see what this is for. Um, even in the heart of winter, there are plants that thrive. The pine tree with its pine cones are one of those special winter creatures. Existing for millions of years, pine is known as a symbol of regeneration and fertility. Just hold a pine cone in your hand and you'll see the beautiful and sacred geometry that creates this natural amulet. Uh, place this tiny, the, this jar of tiny pine cones on your altar symbolize fertility, the element of earth, or regeneration, or keep close by under your pillow or in your pocket as a charm. P quick thing on pine cones. Um, pine cones were a big, are a big thing with me, like, this time of year. Um, we do a wishing pine cone. We did our wishing pine cone. If you've seen any of the Zodiac videos, um, I mentioned that, um, Intention setting for 2023 would have been best performed. I feel like um, the energy was better for manifestation between December 21st and 23rd. Today's like the 27th. Um, so that's a little, a little late for that, but it's not too late. And the reason for this is because um, in approximately two days, 28th, 29th, I'm hearing both, um, Mars and Mercury will both be going into retrograde. So it would be a good time and they will be there till mid January. So doing new year's resolutions on the first, um, may get a little hairy, um, thinking like the, like, um, making a wish on a genie and they like, they're super specific to the point where it's absolutely incorrect. Um, there was like the wish dragon. It was a cartoon movie watched with the kids. Um, reminded me of that. If I'm thinking about, um, uh, doing new year's resolutions on the first, or on the 31st even, that's the vibe I'm picking up is like when a genie grants your wish, but like in the most wacky way possible where it doesn't even actually help. So that's kind of the energy I was getting. Um, we did pine cones. Um, we did a little pine cone magic. We put wishes on um, parchment um, folded toward us. Wishes as in like things that you wanted to happen for us in the coming year. Um, phrased in kind of like I am or I have or just the word like a keyword itself like success right um, and folded toward us to bring it in and then um, I had a green candle lit which is a good manifestation color for me um, it also connects to the heart chakra anyways um, green candle um, it was a like jar candle so that the wax could pull pool up in there as it melted dipped it in there and then used the wax to kind of glue it in the between the like petals I guess of the pine cone um, and then we threw them in our fire pit which is still burning we are on day like six of the fire pit um, I keep refreshing it it's still warm in the morning I refresh it um, I'm in Arizona so we're not getting any snow or anything like that so anyways okay so that was a quick little tidbit on pine cones I also have a little um, kind of like a earth element altar kind of setup um, that I just redid and I posted like a, a cute little video of like it has my mushroom crystals I have a jar with a small pine cone that I collected myself um, and a piece of uh, like a sprig of pine uh, from the same pine tree um, at a relative's house in the mountains 
um, that I collected several years ago and I keep that on there. Um, but it's a cute little tiny pine cone. It's bigger than that, but it's cute and it's a little tiny. Um, and if you're interested in that video, it's on my TikTok. I think I posted it this morning. So it's as of right now, the last one I just posted. Um, and the links are in the link tree, all of that down there. If you're interested in seeing my little thing and my cute little um, crystal mushroom fairy circle that I put on there. There's other stuff too. Check it out if you're interested. Okay, that was it on, on the uh, pine cones. Uh, just to share a little personal experience, but that is what was in here. That is all of the items. So I did get everything. Now let's talk about this ritual. Um, let's see. Uh, winter month are sacred. A magical cocoon, the death, in the death and the rebirth cycle, a time of rest. I honestly think humans are supposed to hibernate during the winter. Also, hibernation. Who else was brought up thinking that bears literally sleep through the winter? Like they don't wake, they don't eat, they don't pee, they did, like they just slept through the whole winter. Who else grew up thinking that? Apparently that's not true. That's what I remember being taught when I was a kid. And I was a pretty smart kid. I was in the gifted and talented program. Yeah. Anyways, um, who else? Uh, I didn't know that I like, I, anyway, carrying right on. I think we should be hibernating. Anyway, beginning, beginning days of Yule and solstice, the winter stretches magically through December, January, and February into March through though occasionally misunderstood as a time of barrenness. Winter is when the seeds are dreamed of before they're planted. This month's ritual is all about honoring the magic of winter by building a winter altar. I guess maybe I kind of did that with that pine cone situation. Um, anyways, and the mushrooms too. Uh, an altar is a focal point for a ritual. It is a way to channel energy, to state your intention, gift offerings to the energies you'll be working with, and to make beautiful and physical magic that you wish the world, wish to see unfold in the world. Um, altars can be simple or complex. Um, they should always contain objects that hold meaning and symbolism in your practice. Um, additional items might include incense, objects that connect with the seasonal, the, the, with seasonal magic, especially with the themes of winter, dried herbs uh, or offerings, a statue of a deity, a representation of a deity, and a small dish of water. Um, if you work with tarot or oracle cards before the ritual begins, would be a good time to pull a card to help gain insight and perspective on the magical process you are about to embark on. After assembling your materials, become grounded in your space. I have not activated this altar. That's why I went ahead and posted the video. There are no intentions or activation involved. It's currently just an aesthetic piece. Um, after assembling your materials, become grounded in your space. You will need a flat space like a table, windowsill, mantle, or mantle to create the altar. Then sit and take three purifying deep breaths. This altar's intention is to connect with the seasonal magic of winter and to feel connected to the wheel of the year. The, with this altar, you can set intentions uh, with this period of rest and retreat and listen for any messages that winter may want to share with you in return. Place your altar cloth on your flat surface. This is the base. Connect with the elements by placing your selenite pendant in the east, direction of air, your candles um, in as fire in the south, water um, in the west, and your jar of pine cones in the north to connect with the spirits of earth. Then bring the altar to life. Light one of your time candles in the center of the sacred circle and speak this spell over your altar. In the darkest night, I listen to thee. Winter, you teach me the sacred key. In this cocoon, I wait patiently and rest. And with your magic, I am blessed. Winter, thank you for all you are. For the darkest nights, the brightest stars. And I'll hold up that piece um, so you can screenshot if you'd like. Um, once the chime candle is completed burning, either bury the ashes or offer them into running water. Your sink is fine. Uh, the selenite pendant is now blessed with winter's magic. Wear it during the season to remind you to connect with your, with the season. Care for your wheel of the year altar by refreshing the water, lighting the candle each month as you move through winter. Pay special attention to any messages, symbols, or synchronicity that winter wishes you to share, wishes to share with you throughout the season. Blessed be. So this is the actual like incantation wording. Ignore my kids. I asked them to be quiet. They're playing video games. But that is everything that's in our box and the ritual that they included. Um, thank you so much for watching. I have another unboxing to record. So the next video, I'll still be looking like this. I will see you in the next, next video. <laughs> Always remember that the magic you seek is within you. Have a blessed day.